<laughs> All right, let's pray, shall we? Yeah, let's honor. Let's look to Him, Father. We honor You this morning, uh, Lord. How wonderful! How marvelous! How beautiful are You, Jesus? Lord, we are gathered together here in Your name. We are Your people, called by Your name. Holy Spirit, we invite You. We humble ourselves as we continue to learn from your word, as we learn to praise and honor and worship you. Lord, I pray that you would open up our hearts, our minds. I, I pray that our soul, our spirit would be sensitive uh, and receptive to the leading of your voice. Uh, help us understand, give us the wisdom that we need to understand and learn your word, Lord. And uh, let the seeds go deep into our hearts, grow and bear fruit, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Okay, uh, I hope you've been learning uh, something in this course, uh, something something that's helpful. <laughs> uh, I hope the teaching has been helpful. Uh, but yeah. Um, so let's just do a quick recap of what we've done. Uh, as I always like to do, uh, we've covered the seven Hebrew words for praise um, Yada, Poda, Halel, Halal. Y'all need more chai. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Shabak, it's nice. Okay, Shabak, and uh, what's the next word? Tehila, right? Barak and uh, Zamar. Okay, yeah, Zamar. Okay, and then we went on to learn the origins uh, of praise, right? About the, the name of Judah. We learned a little bit about uh, Leah and Rachel. Right, and how God honors people who chooses to praise. You know? uh, it's just wonderful. So that's what uh, just a very quick recap of what we've learned so far. Um, now I know I haven't started teaching in this class yet, but th does anybody have any questions from the previous classes that you've had that you wanted to ask? Uh, and if anybody online, if you have a question, please type it in the chat section, okay? Because uh, the sound clarity is not always the greatest. So if you have any question, put it in the chat section. We'll try and address it. Any questions here, guys? Anything? Yes? No? Maybe the Indian nodding? No questions? Okay. So you know what they say, no? If you have no questions, you either understood everything or nothing. Right? <laughs> okay, let's just continue. We are still in chapter 3. Um, we looked at... Uh, wait. Yeah, we stopped at understanding the origins of praise. Um, And then we stopped at, uh, actually we stopped where God is enthroned on the praises of his people, right? Uh, Psalm 22, verse 3, that's what it says, isn't it? Psalm 22, verse 3, uh, what does it say in your Bible? Who is enthroned in your Bible? Um, so I just want to very quickly look at, you know, this, what we concluded in the last class. Uh, throne, again, in Hindi, Singhasan, isn't it? 
So throne room is what? That's also Singhasana. No, right? So throne room. Throne room, matlab. Bedroom. Sorry? Okay, something. Okay. So, uh, in simple words, this is a room where the throne is placed. Is that easy to understand? Yeah, it's a room where a throne is placed, isn't it? So, in this room, if a throne is placed, it becomes the throne room. Yeah, where the king is seated. And in the midst of the king, to his right and to his left, are the ministers, you know, all the government officials of the land. Right? It is in the throne room where decisions are made for the kingdom. Right? Decisions are made for the country and everything. what has to happen, you know, how much is one dollar, how much it should be, <laughs> you know, all those things are decided in the throne room, everything, right? It is in the throne room where the king is seated, right? King is seated. I, I, I know we spoke about this in the last class, but I felt like we need to just dwell into it just a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah? Okay. Please bear with me. Uh, forgive me if I'm sounding repetitive. Um, for the longest time, right, for at least to, since 2010, in, how, do you know the song? We, we might probably sing this in the Supernatural Hour. Uh, I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. No? No? Okay. Take me past the outer courts to your holy place, past the brazen altar. Okay. Very old songs, okay? <laughs> uh, but all of it, it, it is talking about the throne room of God. Like, Take me past the outer courts into your holy of holies, right? Holy of holies is like the throne room here on earth, um, and and ever since I started reading, you know, Revelation, the four and Revelation chapter four and five and Isaiah chapter six, especially Isaiah chapter six, uh, you know, Isaiah is having this vision of the heavens, the throne room of God. My prayer for the longest time has been, I want to see what they saw. So why not make that prayer? No, there's nothing wrong in it. You know, I want to see what Isaiah saw in Isaiah chapter 6. I want to see what John saw in Revelation chapter 4, 5, and 6. I want to see what Daniel saw in Daniel chapter 7. And I want to see what Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel chapter 1. Um, all of these chapters that I've mentioned, if you haven't read it, no, you are all Bible college students. I'm sure you've read it. Uh, <laughs> read it again. But ever since I've read those passages, my prayer, one of the prayers has been, I want to see what they saw. Uh, you know, it's just in his throne room, in his majesty uh, and whatnot. So... In Psalm 22, verse 3, it says, God is enthroned. That means his throne is exalted. Enthroned is two words, right? Enthroned is two different words, separate words. He's enthroned. That means he builds a throne on our praises, right? God is enthroned on our praises. That means he's seated on the throne, like, you know, he builds the throne on our praise. That means when you say, God, I love you, you are awesome, you are magnificent, you are majestic, you are holy, you are wonderful, you are, you are kind, you are merciful, you are faithful, I praise you. You are my Jehovah Jireh, I praise you. You are my Jehovah Rapha, I praise you. El Shaddai, Adonai, I praise you. What are you doing? I'm praising him, and as I praise him, he's being enthroned. Are you with me? 
And David makes this prayer, says, my soul magnifies the Lord. What does he say? Magnify, right? You, you've heard that word before, magnify? Kind of. Uh, how many of you in your school have used a magnification glass? Magnifying glass. You've used magnifying glass? Yeah? You've done that experiment with pointing to the sun and trying to burn a book? <laughs> ah, that I've done, sir. You know, the subjects I didn't like, I tried to burn that book. You know? <laughs> so what does a magnifying glass do? It makes the small thing big, isn't it? It's like the specs. You take the magnifying glass, you go, you can read the small thing big, isn't it? That's what a magnifying glass does, right? So magnifying or magnification is to make small things big. Yes or no? But when David is praying, my soul magnifies the Lord, how do you make someone big, so big, more bigger? Someone is already very big, right? But how do you make him bigger? When you go through the entire psalm, it says, when I praise him, right, he becomes big in us. He becomes bigger than our situation that you are facing. Are you following? When you choose to praise him, he magnifies himself. He exalts himself over the situation and the circumstances that you are going through. Are you with me? Yes, and so that's why when we praise, he is enthroned, his throne becomes big. That means if someone is enthroned, there's place only for one person on the throne. Yes or no? There is space only for one person on the throne. So if God is enthroned, if Jesus is enthroned on our praises, that means someone else is dethroned. Dethroned means they're off the throne. They're not seated on the throne anymore. Are you with me? So if God is enthroned on my praises, that means the enemy, the devil, shaitan, <laughs> he is dethroned. Are you with me? Yeah? So, now another important thing that you need to pay attention is if God is enthroned on our praises, if God is enthroned on our praises, the opposite of praise is complaints. Not being grateful, not being thankful, right? Are you with me? So if God is enthroned on our praises, who is enthroned on our uh, complaints? Why did you bring us out to this wilderness, Moses? You could, we could have been in Egypt. Why did you bring us out to here to die? There's no water. It's bitter. There's no food. There's no bread. There's no meat to eat. There's nothing. Why did you bring us out? What did they do? They were constantly... They did this three things, very famous thing. Remember these, okay? M, C, G. Murmuring, complaining, grumbling. Murmuring, complaining, grumbling. Constantly against God. So what happens, so if praise is building God's throne, complaints and ungratefulness, not being thankful for what God has done, enthrones the devil's throne. Are you with me? Yes? Now, Psalm 100, verse 4, it says, I will enter his gates. Kya <laughs> hai? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. I will enter his gates. Whose gates? 
whose gates sure no god's gates no pakka uh, uh, my gate sir it's uh, <laughs> my house gate no. <laughs> i will enter the gates of god with thanksgiving and his courts with praise so if you're entering god's gates with thanksgiving and praise whose gates are you entering when you complain and murmur ah. how many of you have complained no one <laughs> such good students we have in class i didn't complain i right? know like, oh stotram right. but i hope you understand the power and the intensity of praise and being thankful being grateful are you with me right his throne is established when you praise when god is enthroned the devil is dethroned when you enter his gates when you enter god's gates with thanksgiving and praise you enter the devil's gates when you complain and murmur and whine are you with me right and so uh, these are all uh, like the basic foundations of praise that we need to understand okay so now that we've understood um let's look at in your notes um in your pdf it's a uh, page 14 it it says distinctives of praise uh, which page number is it for you guys distinctives of praise page 14 right at the bottom okay cool yeah yeah so the there are different kinds of praise that's basically what it is okay so praise the first one is, the word used there is extrovert in nature extrovert so what is okay what does the extrovert mean any idea <laughs> extrovert how do you spell it e x t r extrovert okay and the opposite of extrovert is introvert so let me give you an example so i am an introvert my personality a character is that means i like to be alone like you know i don't i don't hate people but i don't necessarily like <laughs> you know spending time I, I, that, i i don't hate people okay let me make that very clear you know when i go to church or someone i am one of those types as soon as the pastor says amen and what not escape okay i am not staying back say hi hello oh yeah, yeah you know <laughs> i mean that doesn't mean i hate people my wife is not like that my wife is an extrovert she will invite a stranger home for lunch okay yeah she was traveling in a train one day from chennai to bangalore she met a lady on train yeah come home for lunch she who wh wh where is she from you know so she likes <laughs> so that's extroverted people is like you know they always like they are very loud they are like very easy to have conversations with they like to have chat with people uh you know and so they very expressive in other words extroverted people now psalm 100 verse 1 psalm 100 verse 1 just go there okay by the way those online i'm looking forward to meeting you all just because i said i'm an introvert that doesn't mean you know so yeah <laughs> so it says make a joyful noise to the lord all the earth isn't it right some 100 verse 1 it says make a joyful noise it doesn't give any specific words it's just saying shout make a noise make make some noise 
make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the lands or all the earth, right? It it doesn't it doesn't say make a joyful noise to the Lord only extroverts. All you extroverts make joyful noise. All the introverts so just clap your hands, clap offering. No, isn't it? Bible is commanding that all it doesn't really care if you're introvert or an extrovert. Are you with me? So praise in your notes, it says praise is extroverted in nature. That means you have to be vocal about it. You have to be expressive when you praise. Are you with me? Right? It's extroverted in nature. Uh, and you read that throughout the Old Testament that everybody, you know, that's why we have seven Hebrew words for praise. is like lifting hands, bowing down, playing an instrument, etc. Okay. Um, the second point is it's to be declared or manifested. You have to verbally say it. You have to declare it. Every morning you'll have devotions, isn't it? And every Sunday in church we make the declaration, isn't it? This is God's word. Right? What are you doing? You are declaring. You are saying it, isn't it? You can't say, I'm praising God and I'm being quiet. Brother, what are you doing? No, no, I'm praising God. I'm praising God. Right? It's extroverted in nature and you have to declare it. Right? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Right? The Bible declares that. So praise is extroverted in nature. You have to declare it. And praise is also based on who God is and not our feelings. It's the last point there. Right? Praise is based on who God is and not our feelings. Um, I don't need to explain that point. Um, but I think we get lost in this thing called feelings. Right? I don't feel like praising him. Uh, listen, I might be teaching on this point that praise is not be based on feelings, but I've gone through that season. Okay? Please don't think that I'm, you know, sorted, perfect. No, no. no. But it's, it's always a, a good encouragement to remind us. It's like, okay, hey, intentionally keep this aside. I know what you're feeling. I know you don't feel like praising, but keep it aside. But let's choose to praise. Because your praise is not based on you, how you feel. You, you praise because of who God is, right? who he is, what he has done for you, and what he does for you. right? If Even if he doesn't give you one more blessing in your life, Simply because he died for you on the cross is enough for you to praise. Understood? Even if he doesn't answer one more prayer of yours, it's absolutely fine. He is still worthy to be praised. Why? Because he has already given everything. He gave his life for us. And that alone, that one reason is enough. Are you with me? Right? Okay. All okay, no? Okay. All right, let's go to the next section. Why should we praise? Why should we praise? We look at a couple of scriptures. We are commanded in his word to do so. We are commanded in his word. Let's read uh, let's, I, Psalm 81, verse 1 to 4. Psalm 81, verse 1 to 4, it says, Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, a sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon, on our feast day. Verse 4, Psalm 81. For it is a statue for Israel. Statue as in it's a command for Israel. A rule of the God of Jacob. Okay? 
why should we praise him because we are commanded in his word to do so how many of us believe in the bible bible calling sir sorry one second i forgot <clears throat> Uh, I imagine in the Bible college, like, no, I don't believe in the Bible. <laughs> All right, so if you believe in the Bible, if you believe what it says, that means you have to do what it says. Right? Uh, one of the preachers, um, <clears throat> he said, Bible study without Bible experience is waste. Doing Bible studies without Bible experience, that is experiencing everything what the Bible has you know, given us to experience is a waste of time. Um, so we are not here only for knowledge. We are not here only for information. We are here for transformation, isn't it? Right. So the first point there is we are commanded in his word to do so. Psalm 81 verse 1 to 4 says that. Um, second point, why should we praise? We've looked at that point extensively, is because God is enthroned in our praises. God is enthroned in our praises. There is power in praise. We'll learn about it in detail probably in the next class, day after. There is power in your praise. And we'll look at that specific chapter second chronicles chapter 20 okay it is a good thing to praise him let's look at psalm 92 verse 1 and psalm 135 verse 3 psalm 92 verse 1 are you there psalm 92 verse 1 it says it starts off by saying it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Right? It is good. It's a good thing. Right? Uh, let's look at another scripture, Psalm 135, verse 3. Psalm 135, verse 3, it says, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for it is pleasant. I'm reading from the ESV version. Um, but yeah, other translations, versions should say something similar. Okay, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for it is pleasant. It's a good thing. Fifth point is why should we praise him? Because he is worthy of our praise. Right? God is worthy of our praise. And finally, last point, we were created to praise him. We were created to praise him. Um, think about it, right? We read in, in the scriptures and Psalms, it says, you know, the trees of the field, they clap their hands in praise, right? Uh, Psalm 19, verse 1. Psalm 19, verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Day and night they pour forth speech. Psalm 95 says, The deep sea creatures praise him. And so all of every other creation praises him, but only you. And I have a choice to praise him. Only you and I can make that choice. That's why our worship is so powerful, is because you choose to praise him. Are you with me? And so when it says we were created to worship, when we realize that, think, here's the thing. In the world, there is a lot of sin that is going on, right? Yes or no? Right? You can commit any different activities of sin, whatever it is. You know about all that, yes or no? You know about pornography, you know about smoking, about alcohol, about uh, bad language or anything, right? Anything that you, we know, we have the knowledge 
of all those things. In this body, I have the capacity to commit all those sins. Yes? I know I can do all those things, but I'm choosing not to do that, and I choose you. And that's why our worship is so special and powerful to God. Are you with me? So when we realize that, hey, I was not created for all the wrong things. I was created for Him, for His pleasure. A perspective of worship changes completely. Okay? Um, we've got any questions so far? Anything? All right, I hope everybody online are doing all right. Okay. Um, just a couple more sections and we'll be done. Uh, when should we praise? When should we praise? Simple answer, at all times and forever. At all times. Uh, Psalm 34 verse 1 is, I will exalt the Lord at all times. Right? Not only on Sunday morning church, 10.30 a.m., 10.30 to 11.15, I'll praise Him. After that, I'll sit down. No. <laughs> when should we praise? Uh, you know, this is one of those verses. It's, you know, we read about this scripture. It says, uh, pray without ceasing. You've, have you heard that verse? Pray without ceasing. That means pray without stopping. Uh, is It's talking about the posture of your heart. Let your heart always be inclined to what God is doing, right? And when that is in when that is in tune uh, with God, praising and prayer will not be a challenge, right? So we are commanded to praise Him at all times to have the posture of praise. And where do we praise? There are three points there: in the congregation, at home, and before the nations, all peoples. Basically, everywhere. Okay? Uh, everywhere. So, uh, we are encouraged to praise. Um, again, I've given a lot of scriptures. Please go through them, highlight them, use it whenever you can. Um, and then, when God takes you back after you're done with your degree, please use all these materials to teach. Okay? Don't just keep it with you. All right, go ahead and teach more people. So let's take a look at quick, uh, very quickly of what we've covered so far. We learned about God being enthroned on our praises, different expressions of praise. That means it's extroverted. That means you have to express, you have to declare it, right? Not just fold your hands and be quiet. Um, we are commanded in, to praise. He's enthroned. It is a good thing to praise. Uh, we are encouraged to praise Him at all times. And we are encouraged to praise everywhere. <clears throat> okay, all good. We'll read just one more scripture and we'll close. Okay, um, let's go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119 was 169. Just one last uh, side note as for us, if you're there. Psalm 119, verse 169. <clears throat> Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. If you have a pen, underline according to your word. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips will pour forth praise, for you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your word, for all your commandments are right.
So according to your word is mentioned twice. It says, let my cry come before you, O Lord, verse 169. Give me understanding according to your word. Okay? Second, verse 170. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips will pour forth praise, for you teach me your statutes. So you see that my lips will pour forth the praise. Why? Because you teach me your statutes. Statutes, in other words, is word, commandment. Because you teach me, I know how to praise. Are you with me? And so the guidelines on how to praise and worship is in his word. Are you with me? Okay. Now I make this, I, I make all my students do this exercise in different batches. Psalm 119 is one of my favorite Psalms. Uh, so the scholars call it as it's a love poetry to the word of God. It's an expression of love poetry to the word of God. There are 175 verses. Yeah. 76. Okay. Like, I didn't get 900 out of 100. Okay. So, so Psalm 119, <clears throat> every verse, every verse, you know, 176 verses, you will find these words. You will find the word, word, you will find the word law, uh, precepts. It, it just depends on which version you're using, okay? Um, precept commands. Ways, testimony, uh, statues, uh, da, da, something else, promise. Um, I'm talking about the English Bible. Okay? <laughs> uh, and depending on your version of the Bible, it might vary. So you will find these verse, words in every different verses, okay? That's the word statues, word, law, precepts, commands, commandments, ways, testimony, promise. All of this it simply means is all pointing to the word of God. Okay? Understood? All of these words are simply pointing to the word of God. So take 15 minutes when you can. If you can find these words, underline it. Okay? It, this whole psalm, it talks about the importance of the word of God. And verse Psalm, 100 and, psalm 19, Psalm 119, verse 170 says, Because you teach me, I praise. Are you with me? Okay. Um, many, many years ago, 2007, 2007, my mentor asked me to do this exercise. He said, he mark all these words in your Bible, go through those words, verses. I've never forgotten that exercise. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I, everybody online, I hope you guys are okay. I'll actually pause here for today. Um, we'll, we'll continue the next chap, uh, next class with the power of praise. Okay. All right. Great. Then, well, thanks for joining in. Um, God bless you. Have a good day. Oh, there is no assignment, Nisha. Is this is just an exercise? So, um, yeah, there is no assignment. Don't worry. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah.